Last year, there were not enough apples for apple picking. This year, there are too many. But that could mean <laughs> fewer apples next year. Jesse Ritka takes us to the apple orchard to check it out. Normally, when you go to an apple farm, you have to sometimes climb to great heights to get the apples. But this year, a toddler could pick them. I didn't expect that they would come down. But apples and branches are coming down at the Cone Farm. A bumper crop is weighing trees down so much that apples are touching the ground and limbs are snapping under the pressure. I don't know if Mother Nature helped us out that way. But I suppose too many is better than nothing. And nothing is what was on these trees last year after a late spring freeze. This year, uh, they tried to make up for it, despite of the fact that I tried to thin them out. When Cone noticed the extraordinary amount of fruit flourishing in June, he knew then that he had to compost the surplus. I waited many years for those trees to grow, and now I have to pick them and destroy the apples. But it was the hope that he would have a better crop of apples. Despite his early season trimming, Cone ended up with a crop more than one and a half times one he gets in a typical year. An excess of apples he hopes to sell before the really cold air hits. I hope that doesn't get below 20 degrees. But that's not Cone's core concern. What's it like when you see your trees sagging down like this? It's not a good feeling because the branches are breaking, you know, it's overloaded. It probably won't produce well next year. He admits it hasn't saved them all, but he's hoping it will save a few. We'll wait and see what happens. So with the help of Post supporting the branches and the thinning earlier this year, they're hoping that next year won't result in a graveyard of apples like it did this year. In the town of Emmett, Jesse Ritka, today's TMJ4. A graveyard of yeah. apples. Yeah, That's we don't not like good, that. No. No. And, uh,